Hi there, welcome to another burst session on math materials. This time we're talking about Cuisinier rods. My name is Janice Novikowski and I'm the district teacher consultant for mathematics and numeracy in the Richmond School District. So as we think about math materials and are doing this series of videos around math materials, remembering that in our British Columbia K-12 mathematics curriculum, we do have a curricular competency learning standard that asks us to encourage students to represent mathematical ideas in concrete pictorial and symbolic forms. It's not an and or, it's all three forms. Um, and that is based on current research that's showing that children that are flexible in their thinking can move between all those three forms. So we are all thinking about using materials across the grades. If you're reading mathematics education literature or articles, you may also see it talked about as CRA, which stands for Concrete Representational and Abstract. And again, um, we want students to be able to fluently go between all three of those forms when they're adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, um, as well as representing their understanding of numbers in different ways. So again, when we think about math materials in our district on our portal and our numeracy foundations framework sites, we do have a materials tile for K to two, three to five, the six and seven and grade eight and nine sites are being developed right now. Um, and you can click on those uh, images and find out a little bit more about them and then also find out ordering information if you're interested in that. So what are Cuisinier rods? Um, Cuisinier rods are the first commercially made mathematically structured educational math material. And they were invented way back in 1945 by a Belgian music teacher. He taught elementary school and taught music mostly. Um, and he really wanted, he, children were so um, joyful in learning music. Um, and he was noticing that they weren't as joyful and delighted in learning about mathematics. So he's like, well, maybe if I make something more concrete and vis visual, and he connected his understanding of music to mathematics and designed these proportional rods. So again, you know that the yellow rod is one half, so a half note and a whole note. So we can be thinking about connections to ma um, music as well. He designed these rods and then a different color represented each rod. And he used wood and he cut them into different lengths. Um, and then there's the unit rod, which is just the one. Okay, so that's the little white one. And then the 10 is the orange. Again, you can be flexible with those as well and play with that idea. So what if the what if the orange rod is actually worth two or worth five? Then what would the other rods be? Um, the person who popularized the use of Cuisinier rods in schools across the world um, was British mathematician and education specialist Caleb Gattinego, Gattigno, um, and that was in the early 50s. So some of us, when we went through school, that was one of the first materials that many of us used. Um, and I know when I have things out in the public with our uh math play space, a lot of grandparents come by and say, oh, I use these as a child in mathematics, and they're so excited to see them. Um, they're now available in both wood and in plastic. So that's what Cuisinier rods are. Again, feel, feel free to play along as we go through um, this short burst session. You could pause here and gather some um, uh, Cuisinier rods if you're watching this as a recording. So here's a quick little video overview in terms of how Cuisinier rods can be used in the classroom and what different concepts they can be used for. And this is a reel that I created for Instagram. Um, so again, you could use them for patterns, repeating patterns is one example of that. Um, they're called relational rods as well. Cuisinier is named after the, the person, but they're relational rods because they're all in relationship to each other. They increase by a unit of one. So we can think about increasing patterns and decreasing patterns, um, spirals, ways to make 10, creating symmetrical patterns. There's another example of an increasing and then decreasing patterns there. This is using a hundred grid, um, which is the same size as the Cuisinier rods to create different designs. And then you can think about fractions and ratios, uh, percentages, um, et cetera. So they can be used in lots of different ways. 
So here's just some of the mathematics content across kindergarten through grade nine that we can investigate with Cuisinaire rods. And the idea is that we're hoping that, you know, teachers in kindergarten are introducing these as a thinking tool for their students in mathematics so that when students revisit them in grade three and then again in grade seven and then in grade eight or nine, they're like, oh, I know about these, but they're thinking about them in new ways, depending on the numbers that they're thinking about and working with. So simple counting. Um, decomposing and uh, composing quantities. So what are all the different ways you can make 10 with combining and composing with Cuisinaire rods? Comparing quantities. This is how I often use Cuisinaire rods with you know, grade ones, for example. So what is the difference? Finding the difference between two rods, putting them up together, and then finding someone in. Um, finding another rod that, oh, so that's too much. So that's not the difference. So is it this? No. And then I'm trying to match them up. So there, so the difference between the five and the nine is the purple rod, which is the four. So again, comparing quantities, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing processes. I often use this for um, looking at multiples and looking at factors for numbers uh, with intermediate students. And then also grade three and up, you know, looking at fractions, decimals, ratios for grade six. I always use Cuisinaire rods when teaching ratios and percentages as well, especially when you connect the 10 rod um, to a hundred chart like this, then that's 10% of the hundred chart and you can use that for percentages. Um, Non-standard uniform measurements, how many green rods, you know, how long is your table in green rods? How long is it in blue rods? How long is it in orange rods? Using that as a uniform but non-standard unit of measurement. Symmetry, like uh, we saw in the video, some of those different designs, symmetrical designs that you can make, including increasing and decreasing patterns. And then when you're playing with those increasing and decreasing patterns, building those with Cuisinaire rods, and then also then translating that to tables and looking at um, those relationships that's happening in those patterns. So again, here's just some snapshots of just some different examples. That bottom left there, you know, there's the 10 rod as a marker, sort of as a benchmark to use. And then what are all the different ways to make 10? So, you know, one day you could be focusing on five and what are all the different ways to make five with Cuisinaire rods? And then, you know, up the numbers as you go, if you're in kindergarten or grade one, you could add a 10 and a five together to make 15. And then what are all the different, all the different combinations for 15 and have students do that as a table task or a center or however you organize your classroom. You can see at the top, there's that butterfly there um, that was, you know, created a symmetrical design using at least 10 different rods or giving some criteria like that. And then once you've created that, what is the value of your design, right? So, and then how could you represent that in an equation? Um, you might not have that, you do that with grade ones and twos, but with our, or your older students, you might. So they're learning to think about brackets and grouping and multiplication. Um, so I'm looking at that one. And so there's one, two, three, four, there's six, five. So I might have brackets six times five plus four times four plus, I'm trying to look at that, two times three plus two times two plus six times one, et cetera. And so they could represent, again, from concrete to a symbolic notation for their design and their pattern. At the bottom, you see the giraffe there. Um, you could ask students to make animals, whatever it is that you're doing at the time, or you could do a structure and then ask them to figure out what the value is. Or you could ask them to say, could you build a structure that's worth 647 if you're working with grade threes because you're working with numbers to 1,000? Or could you make an animal that's worth 89 if you're working with grade twos? Um, on the right there, there's a little face. That's a very common task. Can you make a face, a hundred face? That's what face it's worth a hundred. Um, you could do a self-portrait or someone else. So different ways to use um, the Cuisinaire rods. At the top, you see the little yellow square. There's lots of Cuisinaire rod trays that you can use to again, explore relationships. And for intermediate students, and when you're introducing multiplication, to introduce that idea of square numbers. So five times five makes a square. Six of the six rods would make a square, et cetera, and exploring those relationships. You have a symmetrical design on the right. And then again, on the bottom right, you see that hundred grid. Um, and that's a template that I can share the link for you where that is. It's on the Regio Inspired Math blog. Um, again, to play with the relationships, percentages in relation to 100, all sorts of different things that you can do with that.
So here's another little short video to sort of show you some more ideas for creating with Cuisinier rods, because it's always important to give students an opportunity to play and explore and get to know the affordances of a material first before you start giving them structured tasks. So you might ask them to just play, investigate, build a structure, and then the sort of the next phase is, okay, now how would you determine the value or how would you represent your structure with an equation um, based on what Cuisinier rods you used? Let me see if I can get that going. Oh, there we go. Let's see if it works. Oh, there we go. So there's the giraffe. So how would you determine the value? And then there's the, you know, just create a giraffe and what is its value? And then creating something with a specific value. So those are sort of the two different um, types of questions to ask. Here's a tower. And then again, how do you determine the value of that? What would the equation be? How would you record that using different operations? So these were some of the things I mentioned earlier. Their names, that's fun to do too. And then the value of their different names, depending, which is dependent on the rods that they use as well. So think about different things that you could create with your students. Here's some um, Cuisinaire rod resources. The one on the left is a book that's just been published in the last couple of years. And it has ideas for kindergarten through grade 12 or even earlier than kindergarten and beyond grade 12, um, different investigations to do with Cuisinaire rods. It's from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, which is in the UK. Um, you can buy a hard copy, it ships within a couple of weeks, but there is also an electronic version, um, an EPUB that you could purchase as well through their website. So that would be a great thing to have at your schools. And then Enrich, um, which is through the University of Cambridge, also in the UK, has the Cuisinaire Rod uh, virtual manipulatives. So again, another way for students to use the same material, but in a different way. And it, we learned so much more about virtual manipulatives during the pandemic and when students were learning from home. And then on the right, you see some different types of Cuisinaire rod trays, which you saw in some of the photos earlier. So the top one, there are um, nested trays, and those are laser cut here in our district. And so if you're interested in those, um, I can send you the file, the vector file for those. If you have access to a laser cutter, or I might be able to pop one in school mail for you. And then on the bottom right are relational rod trays that are uh, created actually by a teacher in Ontario. And she has a website, relationalrod.com, yeah, relationalrod.com, um, with lots of lessons and ideas and games to play with her trays. And they have 100 charts that you can slide in as well. And those are available on amazon.ca. So just some other resources to support your investigations with Cuisinaire rods. And then just some, we're wrapping up each of these material sessions with some just classroom tips for storage. Um, some materials like Cuisinaire rods lend themselves to being stored and being sorted by color or shape or number for other materials. Oh, I'm just gonna click that off. Um, So you could look for containers that have sections. They often have them um, this time of year in like the dollar store um, for picnics and that type of thing. So looking for those kinds of trays um, so that you could have them in different sections or just small containers for each type of rod or type of manipulative. Um, some students find that um, easier to find what they're looking for as opposed to like a jumbled collection of materials. And then also just another tip is you have your standard you know, Cuisinaire rods, but also look for various versions of the materials and have those in your mass storage room um, to support your teaching. So for example, there are jumbo size Cuisinaire rods that are made out of foam and they're great for doing a demonstration in front of the whole class. And there's also magnetic or Klingon uh, Cuisinaire rods that you can use on your whiteboard, which are also great for doing demonstrations. So have a look out for those um, in different educational catalogs, et cetera. So as we finish the session together, thinking, I want you to think about how you will use these materials to support student learning. And thank you for joining me.